Good afternoon, evening, night, whatever it is to everyone. So I was asked during the week if some if we could use cabbage and sea sound to create a, a live type sampler, um, you know, with the nice waveform viewer and, you know, the little slots that you can drag samples on and things like that. And I thought, yeah, that'd be interesting. That'd be a nice um, challenge. So um, challenge accepted. So I'm going to try to create that um, in the next hour or so and let's see how we get on. So um, I'm going to be using C sound and I'm going to use in C sound front end called cabbage, which lets us export um, our C sound instruments as plugins. So effectively, I'm going to be building a, a sampler plugin using C sound and cabbage, right? So first thing I guess we want to do is look at the live um, sampler, which looks like this, right? So we got these sample slots. Um, let me open up some so the idea here is that we can drag a sample onto any of the slots and they are triggerable then by uh, MIDI. So, right, so and as we click on the different samples, we get a different sample viewer over here. So I guess what we can do is we can create um, 16 sample slots and have a um, some kind of waveform viewer over there um, on the right hand side. So I'll leave live open and I'll go back to cabbage and I'm going to create a new instrument. So I'm going to create a, a synth because this is going to be driven by MIDI. So if we select the basic synth um, template here, that's the easiest. And I'm going to call this sampler. I call it simpler. Simp, simp, I'm going to call it simple sampler. How's that for a name? Now, if I save this, Command S, Control S, if you're on Windows, um, I have this basic synth here, okay? So just a quick run now. So every time we press a key on this, the MIDI note or the, the, the frequency is sent to this instrument as P5, the amplitude is sent as P4, sorry, pitch is sent as P5, pitch is sent as P4 and the amplitude is sent as P5. Okay, but anyway, we don't want any of this code, so we don't need it. So I'm just going to yank it out. Gone. So now when we play this, nothing happens. Right. Uh, this section up here is where I write and declare all my widgets and stuff like that. Right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it 800 by 600. And I'm going to set the color to be white, just to make it nice and easy to see on the screen. Okay, and I'm going to edit mode, command E, and I'm going to just move this, just gonna plunk it down there. Uh, so I may as well make it the whole width of the instrument. And that's fine. Save, right. Oh, I'm gonna update the name of this simple sampler. It's just a simple sampler, right. Okay, now. Where to start? Right. Well, first of all, I suppose we should work on the functionality of dragging a sample in and having it load someplace so we could see it. Right. So we have um, a sound filer object. Go back into edit mode. Right click sound filer. That will do the trick. Oh, sorry. I got a breakpoint. Actually, I'm running this through the um, <laughs> silly, silly me. OK, but now we can go back to this. Sorry, I didn't realize that the instance of cabbage I had open at the moment is actually actively running through a debugger in the background. But anyway, fear not, people, it won't affect us. So I've got a sound filer object. Actually, I guess the size of this thing should be probably, let's make it a little bit more like the one in live. So we're going to make the size 1200 and maybe make the height 400. Okay, now. Well, actually, let's make the size 800 again and just the height 400. Okay, that'll do for now. And drag this down here. And we can kind of drag that down there. Right, okay. So anyway, now we want to be able to drag a sample onto an area of this and have it load up in the sound filer. So the first thing I'll do, oh, wait now. The first thing I want to do, get rid of that. The first thing I want to do is set the GUI mode to Q. And this is so we can use the new cabbage opcodes, right? So I'll explain their use as we go along right now. Anyway, first thing is there's a reserve channel in cabbage called last file dropped. That will give us the name of the last file dropped. So I'm going to say S. Well, actually, first of all, I'm going to set up an instrument. 
1000. I'm gonna offload this instrument one is by default called every time. And I'm gonna get rid of those pop-ups. I was just messing with them the other day. Uh, Auto-complete, I'm gonna turn them off. Uh, instrument one is gonna be triggered every time we play the keyboard, right? Instrument 1000 won't be, but I'm gonna set up instrument 1000. I'm gonna call this, what I call this? I call this um, GUI, just instrument GUI. It's gonna be more than GUI, but uh, for now I'll call it instrument GUI. Instrument GUI 0Z. That means it's gonna run for as long as the plugin is open. Right, I, I call this plugin because it actually is a plugin. If we go to the patcher here, we can see, oh, I've got a simpler, I've got another, uh, delete that one. Uh, that's the plugin. So kind of cabbage is, is, is a host as well. But anyway, file, okay, so I'm gonna do, S file is gonna be the file that was last dragged, right? I'm gonna do S, or K file changed, and then I'm gonna get cabbage, get, and then last file dropped. Now, just to check that this is working, I'm going to tab this over just to make it easier to read. I'm going to do printf, which will print something to this console screen down here. I'm going to do printf, uh, s file, and then I'm going to use this. So, okay, file changed. So, this cabbage get opcode is going to read the value of a channel. In this case, last file dropped is the name of the channel. When that channel has changed, k file changed is going to be 1 just for an instant, just for K cycle. And then uh, S file is gonna be the name of the file. So let me check that and drag a sample in here. So we got our samples. So I'm gonna just drag that on here. And indeed, it prints a sample down there. Okay, that's kind of the first thing. Oh, well, why don't we just then go ahead and load that sample to that particular window. So in order to do that, we need to give the sound filer a channel. So and all communication between csound and the widgets happen over a channel. So I'm going to call this channel sound filer one. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do cabbage set. Okay, the first thing the cabbage set takes is some kind of trigger. So we can use the k file changed. That should be lowercase k. Every so often I'm just going to check to make sure that I'm recording this because I get paranoid that I've somehow stopped recording. Um, K file change, right, is going to be the trigger. Now, the channel is sound filer one, right? What we want to update is the file, and we want to do S file. Okay, so let's see. Drag a sample in. Ah, there's another breakpoint. Oh, Lord. Okay, now there's a sample in. I'm back. Um, now, okay. By the way, the, the, the version I'm debugging it as we do this is this is the most recent version. I don't know why I have it open in the debugger, but anyway. Uh, won't bother us again, I promise. Right, I'm just gonna try file 22. Okay, so we can drop the files in there, no problem. Now, I guess we want to, when we play this, we want, how are we gonna play this back? I suppose the easiest way is just to play it back with the disk in opcode. Uh, we could use a, um, we could use some function tables as well, but um, let's just do it with a disk in opcode. Okay, now I'm just going to check are these, I think all of these are mono files. Um, they are mono files. Okay, so I'm just going to do disk in two. That's going to take a, f a name of a file. Okay, so I'm just going to use, hmm, I have it here, the last file that was dragged in, right? So I'm going to do this, grab this from here. Now, this isn't the way I'm going to do this to finish off. I just remember that wouldn't work. But um, file code uh, pitch is one, skip time is zero, and loop is zero. And if we do outs, A1, A1, save this, drag a sample, play a sample. Okay. Now, so it's always on the same note, right? But still, it's not bad. Look. Oh, you know what's going to be confusing is none of these samples are actually in. They're all different. Um, they're not organized by pitch. But anyway, that's fine. So this part is kind of working, right? We kind of have a very basic sampler. First thing I'm going to do with the first thing. This isn't the first thing. I've already done loads of first things. I'm going to take out the MIDI key CPS. So now if I do this, if I print P4 here, uh, every time I print something here, okay, we're getting note deleted because the 
file. We didn't load a file. Um, okay, just blah, 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 blah. okay. So we're getting sixty-seven, right? And we're also, get, we're also getting a click because as soon as we release the note, this instrument stops. Okay. So anyway, we can we'll, we'll deal with that later, right? But we can see that if we press C four, we get seventy-two. Press C three, we get sixty. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit more useful later on. We'll be able to say if note is sixty, then play the sample that's loaded in sample slot one. Okay, at least that's the way I'm thinking about this. Right, next up, back into edit mode, and let's drop in a, we'll drop in an image. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. Okay, we'll probably fit eight of those or 16 of those in there, potentially, maybe a little bit smaller. Okay, I'm going to set the outline thickness, will I? Yes, I'll set the outline thickness to be three. I'm gonna set corners to be 10, like in live. And I'm gonna set the outline color to be black. Okay, right, there's our sample slot. Now, there was a, a play button in the, in it as well, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a play button. Um button, button. Okay, now this is gonna be it kinda needs to be small, right? So um for now. If I was doing this for real, I would be using a uh, an image here. But it's going to set text to P, okay, and that can be play, All right? That's fine. I mean, it's not it's not great, but it'll do. Uh, I guess we could make it a little bit wider, will we? And just call it play. Would that be so bad? I don't think so. Would it? Play. Now. Right. So. Uh, I'm just gonna push it over slightly, right? Okay, so we've got sample. Now we should, we should probably put a one in there as well, right? Just to make it clear that it's sample thing one, right? So I'm gonna create um, a label. I'm gonna, well, I don't really have to copy that, do I? Uh, and I'm gonna set the Y value to be 20. I'm gonna set the width to be the same as the button. And the height is going to be that's the height is going to determine the size of the font. And I'm going to set text and I'm going to set this to be one because it's going to be sample one. One, right? That's actually we can make that a little bit bigger 18. One, and I suppose then we have to bring this back a little bit and maybe text color should be black as well. Or is it font? Oh, black. Or is it font color? I can't remember right now. Maybe it's font color for this one. Yes, font color. Okay, now there's a sample slot, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that Cabbage only loads a sample to that one. Now I'm going to think about this. We want to make sure at the moment we only want it to load a sample when something is dragged to there and not when something is dragged just uh, anywhere on the screen, right? We only want it to happen when it's dragged to here. So the question is, how do we do that? Right. So let's see. We're gonna. I'm gonna try something here. So if, what we could do is, like, if we do, we can get mouse X. So if you see if you see down there in the left hand side, we have this mouse X and let's see now does mouse X work when we if I drag something over. That's what I'm wondering. Now it's not there, right? Because I'm dragging it from outside. So that is potentially an issue. Although if we check if mouse X on the file change event. Okay, let me try this. So if we do, um, mm, 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 mm. so we're gonna say if k file change is equal to one, that means the file is after changing. And if, all right, so we can throw that in there. Now, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if Chan get k mouse x is just say for now less than whatever that is um, 60. Okay. Then 
update the sound file. Okay, let's try this. Now, it should not update if the sound file is dragged here. Okay, but it should update if the sound file is dragged here. Okay, that will do. I mean, we could just check the x, y width and height of those, of, that, of each sample slot, right? But I also think that we might try a different way of doing this. So we can also check and see what the, the current widget is. Now, I just don't know when the update will come, but let's, okay, s current widget and k okay, widget changed, cabbage get, and then uh, current widget. Okay, so now I'm gonna set the image the channel for the image to be sample sample slot one sample slot one and so let's do something here do print f s current widget and then k widget changed so that's just going to print the value of the current widget whenever it changes. So that gives a sample slot one down there. Sorry, I pointed at the screen, but you can't see my fingers. Right, and okay, sample slot one, sample slot one. So what I'm thinking is we might do, we might just say if, so we can do a string compare and we can say if string current widget is equal to, let's see, string CMP, K, yeah, because we're doing a K, K time. S current widget and sample slot one. Now, I'm not sure what this returns. I think it's zero if it's equal. Well, we'll find out in a minute. Now, so if I do this, hmm. See, I don't know when sample slot one gets updated. And let's see, should I check that first? Let me just see if this works. Um, like I said, I'm not 100% sure of what it returns, but I think it's, I think it's zero if it's the same. Let me print something here. Um, print KS. Hello, zero. Yeah, hello has gone in there. Whoops. Easy. Oh. Ah. Stop. That's a um, classic rookie mistake there, what I just did. Um, I just decided to try and print the word hello to the screen about um, a gazillion times a second. Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to just uh, now. Oh, are we back? No. If it wasn't running in the debugger, it would um, it would have died a lot more gracefully than this. Okay, I need to um, figure out what string compare C returns, and so it compare and sets the result to minus one, zero, or one if the first string is less than equal to yeah so it's, so it's zero okay so that does work but unfortunately i don't think that the current widget is getting updated in time for this to work so I, we're going to have to check the coordinates so what we can do let's we have to have to be clever about this so one of so what we have to be careful here is that we don't end up having to write code for for each of these guys for each 16 of these because it just break my heart so what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're writing it in such a way that when it comes to duplicating each one of these, we don't have to rewrite the code. I think I just said that. Anyway, right, so I'm going to, let's see. So actually I'm gonna call this sample slot and I'm going to pass it a parameter here that's going to determine which slot it is, right? So P4 here is going to be, I slot number is going to be equal to P4. Okay, 
now we're getting somewhere now slot number in this case is one right and this is sample slot one right so i'm going to say s channel and then i'm going to do sprintf sprintf and i'm going to say sample slot and then i'm going to say i slot number right so this is now now we have this channel here okay so uh some filer one so this is going to be sample slot um one right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say um i bounds cabbage get and then i'm going to say s channel bounds and I'm going to save this wait now I've got I'm not, I'm not going to get any other this is gone this can be gone save okay that's all right um so again some errors here cabbage get does it work with irate it might not so I'll just do it with k that's all right I don't mind that's fine okay so and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to so k bounds is going to give us the bounds of the of this right so let's say for example if I just quickly here do something like um, file changed print f I just want to check the bounds here and see that they're okay or I'll just do print k2 k bounds zero okay that gives us an eight let's check and see is that right that is correct okay so the first one is going to be the uh can i do that can i do this or does it have to go on another line it has to go on another line that's okay that's all right just been lazy k bounds two is six just double check that six okay so that's the x the y and then the width and the height and just double check this just to make sure that that's right x y width and height okay now we're laughing so now what we can do is we can say in here we can say if okay let me just grab k x chan get mouse x k y chan get mouse y and now I'm going to check if the mouse, if kx is greater than k bounds zero, which is the x coordinate, right? And kx is less than k bounds zero plus the width, which is k bounds with height two right so that means if the x value if the mouse x is greater than here and less than here okay and k y is greater than k bounds one and k y is less than k bounds one plus k bounds three huh. it's a bit of a mouthful then then do it right so then go in here and set this right otherwise don't and if okay now the moment of truth let's get some samples going so if i drop something here nothing happens that's good if i drop something here that's good we have that okay now what i like about this particular setup is that now we can just drag in we can create loads of those and they're dynamic okay so they're going to change with the instance number okay and we're not going to have to check we only have to write that code once okay this I'm happy with this uh, let's see now what I what we need to think about though is the instrument 
when the instrument is played right so we have hmm what's the handiest way to do this now perhaps with an array of samples we i'm thinking about how we're going to how we know which sample is like okay so this is going to be c60 right sample slot one right it's going to be c3 so what i'm thinking is how do we how do we keep the sample that we drag on that so the keyboard knows that it's it's that sample to play right so when we play the keyboard let's just think this through when we play the keyboard and if so we say if p4 is equal to 60 then and what i want to write here is somehow in code is play the sample play the sample that's that was dragged to sample slot one okay so i'm just trying to think now how how do we what's the best way to keep track of all the samples that we're dragging around the place so let's see we could use an array that's like um that's the the first thing that comes to mind but i, mm, I don't like using global arrays so i'm going to try and think of a, a different way to do this so What about we can set a string channel in here called, we could do something like chan set. Mm, can we do the guy? Uh, I wonder, let's see. I need to do it in here anyway. We can try it and see. We're gonna set a channel. Okay, so the channel takes a, a value and a name. I'm just gonna use straight up chan set here. Um, and I'm going to, the value is going to be s file and the name is going to be this name here sample slot but i'm going to append um something to that right so i'm going to say um sprint f sprint f k Oh, I don't know how long I've been going at this already. Let's see. Um, so first of all, I want to take the sample name that we have. And then I want to say something like um, file. Do we have this already? I already have this. Hang on a second. Wait a second. If this is 60, right? I think I can just do cabbage get, right? I can say s file cabbage get and let me just try it here sample no 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 i can't i could get the file from the sound filer but the sound filer i want to just use one sound filer for all of them so that wouldn't work obviously because it had only played the sample that was loaded at the time when we hit the key <gasps> back to my other idea which was chan set um s file and then I wanted to do well I just type this now sample slot one I'm just gonna do this um, file now that's gonna set that and then in here I want to say if it's p4 is equal to 60 then I want to print s jan get s and I'm gonna try this okay now at the moment, if I press this, oh, I need to press C4. Okay, C60. Nothing is in there because that is empty sample slot file. Okay, let me try and drag something on here. Okay, and now when I press this, haha. <laughs> okay, I think that's the easiest way to do it. Now we can just, in here, we can create the channel that we want. We can say something like, file that's easy um, and remember the, all these all these um, variables are local to the instrument plane so it doesn't matter if I have a file up here and I have a, a file here um, that's 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 no problem um, okay so I'm gonna say file uh, I want to do um, sprint F oh, 
yes, I want to grab this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, no, let's see, what am I doing? If it's, no, if it's 60, then if P4 is 60, then it's going to be sample blank one, right? So, okay, I'm going to do pass a thing to that. And then I'm going to do P4, 60 minus P4, is that right? P4 minus 60. Uh, if P4 is 60, then I wanted to play sample. I want to play its file on sample slot one, right? Okay, so that means it's going to be 60 minus P4. P4 minus 60. P4 minus 60 plus one. Okay, right. P4 minus 60 plus one, right? It's it's kind of it's it's late evening time here. Anyway, so print. Now I'm going to do sample slot and then underscore file. Right, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say print s and I'm going to print that. Okay, and should basically be the same thing, but now it's a little bit. Oh, nope, sample slot. Oh, yes, press, I pressed the wrong note. Uh, C4. Ah, let's see, there's a way of changing that to um, now. What is it? Is it base octave? I'd prefer if it was. Honestly, I prefer if it was C4, but right now I cannot think of how to change that. Is it base octave, uh, octave, base key, base uh, octave, key, uh, key base, ah, oh, here, screw it, I'm just going to say C3. Right, um, now, let's see, okay, well, now we can do this, we can do um, disk in 2. I'm going to get the file that's on that sample slot and I'm going to play it. Oops, A1, A1. And. Okay, and nothing plays on the rest of them. Now, probably a lot of you were thinking, oh, can I play this here? No, I didn't implement that play there. Right. Now, a lot of you are thinking, OK, you just spent the last 25 minutes recreating the thing that you just basically made in the first three or four minutes. But really, this is far more dynamic now because we can really easily and simply just duplicate this loads of times. We're not going to have to write any more code. I promise. OK, first of all, now the play button here, we want to implement this right. So that should be fairly straightforward. Let me see. Um, Mm, 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 mm. That should be called play. Oh, we don't even have a channel for that. Channel sample slot play one. And yoink. so what we can do here is, oh yeah, that's probably the easiest thing to do is we can say, um, K up, 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 up. K button, K button, trig, cabbage get, and then sample slot. No, what was it called? Sample. I'm just gonna sample slot play one. Sample slot play one. Cabbage get value because we're getting the value of that button. We're not getting an attribute, uh, even though it kind of is an attribute. But anyway, and then what we're gonna do is say if K trig. K okay, button trig is equal to one, then, and if, and what we can just do here is we can just start that instrument down below playing. Uh, instrument one, gonna play it for whatever a second. Oop, start after zero seconds, play it for a second, and we're gonna pass C60. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass 60 plus I slot number minus one. Okay, now let's drag a sample on. Bingo, and then, hey, so we have that plane there, and we have that plane there. Now, this is annoying me. If I just play this really quickly, oh, hang on, wait. And, yeah, if I play it really quickly, it kind of stops, right? So what we can do is, we can say that we have this file, right? So we can say, now here's a 
quickest thing we say p tree is going to be equal to and then file length yeah and then the name of the file right and that means it's always going to be or does it let's see if it's a midi triggered note No, that's not going to work. So what we can do is we can just put in a, a dummy envelope here, uh, dummy env, and just do madsr and just have whatever 0 0.1 for the start, the uh, decay, whatever, doesn't matter, 0, uh, sustain, 1, whatever. And uh, we're going to say um, file length. We'll make sure that it always runs for this length of time. And that's out. So let's try that again and drag a sample on here and play it here. Okay, and we get free polyphony as well. And we got this. Okay, now, now we need 16 slots, right? Now I kept telling you that we're gonna be able to do this really simply. Now, first of all, I'm just checking. So the sound file over here. Oh, we also, well, let's put in another one just for the minute, okay? And again, uh, this is kind of, this is the, the long way of doing it. I'm just gonna push everything over on the X axis here by 100, um, 100 and 100. And let's just hope that's, yeah, that'll do for now. Okay, two, two, changing these, two. Okay, and two, two, two. And what I'm gonna do down here now is I'm gonna trigger the next sample slot, sample slot two, and that's easy. Okay, and I'm gonna save that now. And if this, and if I drag one to here, I should update that one and, ah, so this one file length, this one is not right. So let's check it down here and Yes. Now somewhere down here we're oh yes. Uh no. Oh yeah, here. Um chance at some fault. Yeah, okay. That's what we're doing wrong. We need to construct a a channel up there. So we're gonna call this file channel and we're gonna replace this with file channel. Now this should work better. Okay bingo and then this goes on here and now we go play oh ah sound file p4 is one right that's just p4 i slot number we don't have to be all clever about it here and then and then two okay and then we go play and then play oh what's wrong with you oh here here of course Mm. Um, sample slot play right so we also need to make a sample slot play channel that's going to be dynamic as well so let's call it this so we'll say uh, s play channel and then sample sample slot play and then s play channel s play channel and now We've got that one, we've got that one, and we've got play, and we've got play. No, why are you doing that? Um, sample, f where else do we have sample file one? Wait, um, this. Well, I assume we're gonna get that kind of error for anything yet that's not loaded, but this is strange. Maybe it's not right up here. Sample slot play two, sample slot play one. That's fine. Sample slot play two, instrument one, sample slot play. This is getting sample slot, this is getting the coordinates from here. Where, oh where? is the error let me save this again drag just one file to here first 
and play it. It's definitely not playing it. Okay, let me print something here. Prints hello from Mars. So hello from Mars, init error. And we're also getting a hello from Mars there as well. Okay, so that means it's calling that. That's good. Now, maybe this is wrong. It could be. It could be wrong. So let me print P4 here. So P4 is 60, right? And in this case, P4 is 61. And 61. Yeah, that is correct. Hmm. S file channel sample slot underscore file. And that's the slot number. It's one or two. So that's 60. That is correct. <laughs> so the problem here is, people, I'm going to take this out for a second and I'm going to print, print s, s file. Okay, so drag that in there, print that, sample slot file. Oh, yeah. I need to grab the actual file. That's just a channel name. So drag that in there and then play and then that's fine. And then drag that in there and then play. And that is fine. Oh, oh, oh man. <laughs> oh, jeez, I don't believe this. Oh, I know there's a few of you out there just screaming at the uh, screen for the last I don't know how long. Oh, Rory, you clown. Else if P4 is equal to 61, end if. Oh, now hang on. Actually, I don't even need to do this, do I? Because I'm already doing this up here. I get, whoa, hang on now. This is gonna make things even easier. Uh, this will be a kind of a, a nice turn of events. I think that's gonna work anyway because we're already parsing the table number or the, the file number so I should be able to go dying and then yes and then over here okay now so we have our play oh yeah that was the other thing now we want to click on this and we want to change what's been displayed over here and then when we have that I think then we are kind of almost um, we're almost kind of we're, we're almost there right so that's the next thing to do so let's see if we do a so we let's see we know actually when the mouse is oh right hang on so if oh no this is this is going to be easier than I thought right I just watch this print k2 chan get old-fashioned chan get here with sample slot one if I press this, uh, I thought that those, is that because the label is there? Yes. Oh, that pesky label. Now, hang on. Wait, can I do a, um, oh, what's the? mouse clicks there is there is a way that i can ignore mouse clicks on this now of course i should know this right um but i can't think of it off the top of my head so um let me just open up the uh dum 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 no i don't uh no i don't 
cancel, cancel, cancel. Right, I just need to go to docs here for a second. Hang on, I should pause this, but anyway. Uh, diddly, 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 diddly. Somewhere in here, value, let's see, clicks, clicks, clicks. Um, something to do with mouse, mouse, oh, no. Um, double click, no, edit, no. Um, Ah, oh, what is it called? Hang on, let me go to the, if I open up the, close that. If I open up the help file, right? For say label, if that works. That probably doesn't work either because I'm still running into the debugger. Okay, mm, this is annoying, but basically, okay, look, this is kind of, we'll just do it. We'll also put in a, a label for the um, sample shot. We'll put in a label for the um, button, for the label as well. Sorry, we'll put in a channel for the label as well. So I'm gonna say um, sample slot two, sample slot two label or sample slot label two and I'm gonna call the other one sample slot label one now um, I'm so here I'm gonna check the value of sample slot label one and sample slot label two they're fixed now it's not great but okay so that changes to one right and if I go right over here that also changes to one so that changes to one and that okay so now I'm gonna make those dynamic, right? So I've got sample slot label, that's there, right? That's the name of the channel, right? And then I'm also going to do um, sample slot label one, slot number, and now I've got sample uh, S label channel. I got S play channel, I got S normal channel. So I got three channels now with this instrument. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, um, K, we we'll call this mouse down k mouse down image k let's see what's that is okay k um image trig cabbage get value and then S channel. So I want to check and see if somebody is actually pressed on the actual image. And I also want to say if somebody is pressed on the actual well, S channel should be S channel. And I always want. And I also want to say if someone is actually pressed on the label. Uh, and then I'm going to call this label trig. And then I'm going to do K mouse down label. So in here I'm going to say if k label is equal to one that is uh, if somebody's pressed on the label or uh, k image trig equals to one then and i have to go back and fix that that should be k label trig and that should be k capital l right now in here i just want to do um print ks just just for a minute, I just want to see, does this actually work? Okay, so now if I click here, hello. If I click there, hello. Okay, so what I want to do is update the sound filer every time someone clicks on it with the file that's been associated with that channel or with that instrument, that instance, that instance, right? So S file, so I'm gonna say S, a uh, slot file or something? No, hang on. I'm gonna grab this. We're, we grab this down here anyway, right? So this is how we get it. Uh, slot file. We have it up here already. OS file channel, right? So all we gotta do is that, right? Now there's a couple. There's some error checking and things we should be doing in here, which which we're not doing yet. K file change obviously is not okay. We'll just put a one in there. Okay. Now if I go back to the files. Drag this over to here. That loads up. 
app loads up. If I click on this, oh yeah, yeah, that should be um, hmm. It's going in there. Just double check. Prints, print ks. Um, I'm actually going to do print f. It's easier. Print f. And then I want to print the that's that, that's that. And now if I click here, sample slot file one. Oh yes, sample slot file one. Obviously, right? Yeah, sample slot. This is the, we're just we're just printing the file channel, right? Yes, yes. We don't want the file channel. We want the actual data that's saved in the channel. So we do this and now we drag this to here, we drag this to here, we click on this, we click on this and now we can swap between the two of them. Okay, I like where this is going. Now, I did mention that we wouldn't have to copy and uh, paste all that code all the time, but actually what you saw me doing up there was copying and pasting that. Mm, not so fun. So. I don't like that. Now, could copy and paste that 16 times. That's your own prerogative. You could do that if you want. But I think this calls for cabbage create opcode. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to do this with cabbage create opcode, right? So um, what we're going to do in here is we're going to basically first of all let me just create one of them first so i'm going to go down here i'm going to take out the second one and in here i'm going to i mean okay that's it's a bit simple right um in terms of what's going on here we don't have an awful lot but look it's it's however we're all just quickly running through this so i'm going to do something like this i'm going to say um i'm going to copy this line of code And now well, I want this to be dynamic, right? The sample slot, I want the channel to be dynamic. And I want this to be dynamic as well, the, um, the position of it. Right, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I, no, it was even, oh, just let's not complicate things. I x pos equals P5, right? I y pos, equals p6 i width equals p7 and i height is equal to p8 right so and now i'm going to say um s image sprint f okay and i'm going to say oh i'm going to just copy these and i'm going to put them down here right and i'm going to take out the commas and now I'm going to put in, so this is the, what are these called, format specifiers for uh, integers. Okay, ding, ling, ling, go right along here. And then I'm going to put another format specifier for integer there. Integer, uh, escape that, escape that, and escape that. Okay, now I want my x, y, and z, and then I want the sample slot number, which should also go up here. Hmm, now hang on a second. I'm just thinking these are all relative to that, right? Okay, I suppose I could do some fancy stuff with that. Okay, yeah, anyway, all right, we've got, um, so I, now close this off, then we do I, oh, I'm just gonna say I X, I Y, it's gonna be easier, I, I width and I height. And then I, uh, I slot number, which you can't see, but it's over there. Just check that. And I'm going to change this to I X and I Y. Now that's going to be S image, S image code. And then I'm going to do the same for the, what's next up there? The button. 
button code and I'm going to copy this and again I'm going to create this so basically I'm going to dynamically create this widget um, okay now this is X so um, let's see what is this this is going to be this X position plus 16 okay so I'm just gonna do IX plus 16 for that right that's that means we don't have to pass any extra things to this right now this one might be a little bit more tricky what is this one this one is 40 so it's gonna be this plus 36 sorry 34 even 34 scroll down that's gonna be IY plus 34 for that one and then the width is going to be 46 and 22 and that can stay the same right 46 22 that's easy and slot number goes in for sample slot and then number okay and then finally i'm going to get the label s label code uh, label code label code label code Gonna grab that, copy that. So this is 24 as well, so that's IX, that's fine. That's gonna be the same as what it was before. Uh, this is now 16, so what was that originally? That was six, so it's plus 10. IY plus 10, I'll fix this up now in a minute, just wanna get those in, and they're gonna be the same. Okay, and text, oh yeah, the text is gonna be the, Text is going to be the slot number, and then it's going to be black, and then this is going to be like so, and then that, and then finish that, and then add the slot number here after this. Okay, now. So this is a relatively new opcode. I hope it works. Uh, cabbage create s image code, and then I'm going to do cabbage create an s button code, and then I'm going to do cabbage create an s label code. Okay, guys, here we go. Wish me luck. I'm going to start this. I've disabled the second instrument. I'm passing the x, y width and height. And I'm going to hit save. Oh, play. Okay. Oh, yeah, look, I haven't escaped that. Okay, that we can deal with that. That's okay. Save. And something else. Insufficient arguments for format. So we've got one, two, three, one, two, three. We've got one, two, three, four on this one. Ah, we've got four on this one. So it should be slot number and slot number again. But look, it drew it drew the little um drew a little box. That's not so bad. Okay, and save. Oh. Not good. That's disappointing. Now I think that let me just try and see does it actually do something like this? Nope. So X Y S button code is not working. So let us try now. Like I said, this is a fairly new opcode, but I would expect that to work. Hmm. Oh, of course. So stupid. Blah. Right, like, uh, hello. What am I actually trying to create here? In the first one, at least I'm trying to create an image, right? In the next one, I should be trying to create a button. And the next one is a label. Oh, man. Right, there we go. Okay. Now, what we've done now is we've offloaded the generation of that GUI stuff to the instrument. Now, so now all we've got to do actually the 76 and the 62 they're going to be fixed anyway right so we don't even need those right 76 
and 62 they're fixed right so uh, yeah and we can take out so we don't need the width and the height here that's gonna save us some heartache and we take out width and height here we're only interested in the X and Y positions right now so each one is 76 wide right so now this is where things get kind of nice because we've just got this little bit of code but we can just create a new slot and let's say I'm going to make this 88 and 6 and I'm going to change the slot number to 2 oh look at that, that <laughs> and now I'm going to put in another one and I'm going to make this what is that uh, well let me set this to be 0 and then go 80 and then go 160 right that should uh, 3 uh huh and then 240 4 sample slot 4 uh huh okay and now i'm just going to add uh, i'm just going to add 8 to each one of these see what i did there just too lazy to do some maths in my head right and now i'm going to do this and i'm going to set the 6 to oh i don't know 60 change these to be five six seven eight and change the 60 to be 70 just try one first yeah okay th there's a bit of a 74 well let me just check 74 first 74 yeah 74 oh no probably 72 okay 72 72 72 okay bingo let's just check check if, if these all work right it's so gonna drop that one in there gonna drop that one there gonna drop that one there so I'm gonna click on this click on this click on this <sighs> happy days so I'm now confident that this is fine and then I'm going to do a uh, 8 9 10 11 oh I'm wondering now if the fonts are gonna be a little bit messed up with this what I go from here I'm just gonna try um, what was it 70 and then okay just try 146 uh, 142 140 mm, 139 138 138 yeah okay and then set all these to be that okay and then finally we'll add in our last one and we'll make this whatever 210 210 maybe 210 no not 210 anyway this should be sample 13 14, 15, 16, and make that 200, it's a bit too small, 206, 204, 204, right, 204, 204, 204, now, okay, I'm going to go to edit mode here, and I'm going to drag this over here a little bit, just to make this a little bit bigger, although, what? I, no, you know what we should do now is we should drag this up here, and we should put controls in under that, right? Anyway, so all of this code can go out. I'm not going to take it out. I'm just going to leave it as a comment um, for the time being, because at any point I might just want to, um, I don't know, comment out some of the stuff here and add some new stuff up there. So it's kind of handy just to have that code there anyway. Now let's see, does this work? Okay, so I'm going to drag the samples over. Okay, four, I'm just going to drag them over kind of somewhat haphazardly uh, for goes over here this goes over to here this goes over to here this goes to here this goes to here do we have one there there yeah, we don't have one there and uh, 19 can go there 20 can go there and 4 can go there and 12 can go there right <laughs> Okay, and then we can, oh, no, yeah, we can click. There we go, and we can click on any of them, and it'll show up. Um, now, I mean, anyone, um, you know, most people would take that as a kind of, you know, stop here, basically, Rory. Um, but 
I'm thinking, I'm thinking first of all I'm going to take out this because it clutters up this bit down here. I'm thinking it would be nice to have some some effects in there. Um, but maybe I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to, um, to you guys to do, but, um, would just set it off nicely though. It would give it a nice little bit of symmetry, wouldn't it? So the other thing is that every time I save this, we get, we lose all the sample slots. So there's ways that you can fix that, right? But I'm not going to do it now, but, um, you can ask on the cabbage form. There's a cabbage state opcode that will let us save strings and their data and stuff like that so that the when a host opens this and saves it that all these samples are saved to disk but i'm still thinking that kind of be interesting to have um some controls over here um let's just try a simple pitch control and then after that at least you guys can kind of maybe add in some of your own stuff okay so if we do rotary slider here i mean just looks good right it looks like it looks like it belongs there now so the question is how many rotary sliders do we need do we want rotary sliders for each one i don't think so i think that's overkill but actually there is an issue if we don't have the rotary sliders for each one because let's say we're clever and every time we click on one of these guys that oh right don't click on one of those guys when they've been dynamically created don't do that but every time we click on one of these guys we could set the value of the the sliders there and it would look like they're different sliders for each sample slot but in the host it would only show one slider and that wouldn't be great because if you want to automate anything you need to have sample sliders for each each one so if we've got a pitch slider in here so if i put in a pitch slider here rotary pitch slider right I'm gonna call this i'm gonna put in a channel sample slot freak some slot one freak um and then i'm gonna say text uh freak so now we've got this frequency slider right now down here well let me check the let me change the um the range of this right so i'm going to go between zero and it can go between zero and two but the sample the, the default value is going to be one right which is going to be no pitch change whatsoever now down when i play this um there's a value the disk in opcode i think it's the second yeah this right is the this lets us change the pitch okay so I'm going to call that file channel because it's not the actual file. The file is stored on that file channel. Right. So, but what I will do is I will say um, S freak channel. And then here I'm going to do chan get, or I can just do chan get I, uh, because it's not going to be, you can't change this channel in real time, but that's, that's okay. I mean, we could set it up to do that, but I don't think you, you, that's something that you really need to be doing. Oh, an S file that should be s file channel now okay and if i drag a sample to here and i play it oh this is the same well that's not that should be um freak what did i call it s slot freak did it s slot freak one yeah okay um, so I'm going to drag a sample onto this and I'm going to play this and I'm going to change this. Okay, so now what's interesting here is that we want to have the, well, first of all, if I'm just thinking here, right, if we play this see there's a click at the end there because it in that case it was just okay because see we're setting the MADSR here it's kind of dependent on the um, frequency 
so the, the file length, right? So which I'm just going to multiply this by five for now. This is lazy, right? I should be working out how long the sound file is going to play if we change the uh, pitch of it, the frequency of it. But I'm, I'm too lazy now. It's getting too late. So no more clicks. OK, great. Now, well, hmm. there is no way about this uh, and there's no way around this. We're going to have to have 16 different controls here because like I said, it, when you bring this into when you bring this into a DAW, you want to have control over each of those, the frequency of each sample. You want to be able to automate that. Otherwise, um, you know, it's 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 not good enough. So what we need to do is we need to add in one of these for each of our oh this is neat as well but all we got to do is add this in here right so we're going to say s freak code sprint f paste that in our slider now the interest the, the, the cool thing here is that they all have the exact same position right but they're not all going to be visible at the same time because that would be just absolute cra craziness. So um, we're going to do this D, same as what we did before. And freak is OK. And then closing and then I slot number. Now if we run this. Now we have to add this code in, of course. Okay, S freak code. Now, so you see, I, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, a lot of frequency sliders all um, bundled up on top of each other right now. Okay, so that's not good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set visible to be zero. I'm gonna save this and now they're all missing, okay? So, What I will do now is, <laughs> is it basically make them only appear when you click on the button, right? So it's going to be some logic to this. Um, now, what's the handiest way to do this? So we know um, when the button is triggered because we have this K lit. So I, I, what am I going to do? I'm going to create a new instrument here just for now. I'm going to call it um, update freak slider, or I'm going to call it show freak slider. And I'm going to say the slot number is going to be equal to P4, right? So I'm passing P4 to this. So every time I click on some one of these, I want to display the frequency slider that's associated with that right makes sense so i'm going to do i i'm going to pass the name of that that's just going to be i rate i can run for whatever 0.1 of a second and i'm going to pass the i slot number okay now what i want to do then in here is i've got 16 slots right so i'm going to say i count is equal to zero while i count is less than 16 do and then that's the end of the do that's so that was a, a kind of do while loop uh, in here I'm going to say I count plus equals one so I'm going to increment I count and I'm going to check and I'm going to say if I count is equal to I slot number then we need to get the name of the frequency label here as well um, where were we getting it here this is the frequency channel and here I'm going to say s frequency channel and I'm going to get it with p4 here okay so the idea is that whenever we push this button it's going to trigger this instrument right and it's going to pass the instance the slot number right and we're going to say if the slot number matches the count, then make that frequency slider visible. Otherwise, don't. So we do cabbage set k trig. Um, it's going to be i rate, right? So I think we can just do something as simple as 
S freak channel and then just visible one and then we we'll say else I'm already thinking of an easier way to do this but for now we'll just do like this um, and then cabbage now I haven't used this cabbage set op code in its um, I read version so I'm not sure if this is going to pull the whole house down or not let's just double check because we have this do while loop in here it's always good to check to make sure it's not going to go on endlessly so I count plus equal to one so okay I count is going to be equal to zero when it starts it's going to run through this and set the different ones to be visible oh no no uh, we want Mm, we want to go through each of them so uh, we want to construct a channel here that's going to be I count okay so this is what we want to do we want to say s free channel is going to be that I count right and then we want to say if I count is equal to I slot number then we want to set this to true, else we want to set it to false, and save. And, okay, <laughs> right, that was makes me a little bit nervous. So if I click on this, hey, now if I change this, but I click on this, hey, now if I click on this, I never go back to this. Nice one, right, so let's see how that goes. Three. Four, five. I'm not gonna. I don't have time to do all this. Just let's just check. Okay. So when I click on this one, it goes to here. Sample slot frequency. It gives me the right one. This is sample slot frequency five. This gives me sample slot frequency seven. So if I click here, sample. Let's see. Now there's just one thing. Ugh, there's gonna be a million things. We're gonna have to stop this soon. Um, when I hit the play button, it doesn't update the sample that's been shown here. That is bugging me. So what I want to do, I can just copy this code, right? Indeed, I can. Just copy that code and put that code in here. So that will also update the file that's shown in the sound filer once I drag it over and let's try a few so if i click there that's fine but now if i press play it should also go there great if i press play it should change here oh but now wait that's ah right that's another thing i want to do i also want to if i hit the play button i also want to update the slider that's shown okay no problem um, I, I know I'm aware that I'm kind of copying and pasting a little bit of code here, but um, it's still not so bad. Let me drag in a few more of these. So play. No, that failed to, that didn't work this time. I dragged in the same file. Uh, I did not want to drag in the same file. Okay. So we just learned a little bit about our sampler here. It does not like to have the same file on two slots, right? Because this is, because we're doing the file change the last time the file was changed. But if the file isn't changed, then you can't drop the same sample onto the same slot. Didn't think of that. But anyway, I mean, look, it's not so bad and we can play it from here. So I guess then what we can do is we can export this and go here file export plugin as plugin synth oh no because i'm running it into the debug right yeah okay so i don't have access to the export anyway that's the simple part is exporting and then bring it into your daw and then you'll have this kind of thing so um yeah anyway if you've got any questions about any of that um i'm happy to answer or take any questions uh, on the cabbage forum and um yeah, and I'll post the code there as well when I post a link to the video. So take it easy. Chat to you soon.